Chunk 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 Hello everybody and welcome to another installment of Practical MDO. Today we'll be talking about partials versus total derivatives. The main idea here is that partial derivatives only tell part of the story, whereas total derivatives tell you the entire story, from the outputs or functions of interest all the way to the inputs or design variables. We'll get more into what that means and I'll explain some more of these terms in just a moment. Know that this firmly has to do with the differentiation subtopic in this course. Okay, so let's first kind of define some terms here. As you might remember from your calculus days, partial derivatives are defined with this kind of curly lowercase d, or delta. Now, partial derivatives, like I said, don't tell the whole story. It's just part of what you need to care about. Whereas total derivatives are this regular lowercase d. Now, again, partials are not total derivatives. I just want to drive that point home. They can be, but in general, it's certainly not the case. So now let's say we have a function, f of x and y here. If y does not depend on x at all, then the partial derivative is very easy. The partial derivative and the total derivative are the same thing. However, if y depends on x, then all of a sudden the total derivative of f with respect to x is different. This is because it depends on both x and y, and y is a function of x. There's this kind of implicit relationship here. Let's kind of look at an example here. So in this example, we have a very simple function. We have y equals x squared plus 2x. x is an input, y is an output. If we want the partial derivative of this function, it's very easy. We simply get 2x plus 2. Now, if we want the total derivatives here, it's actually the same thing in this case. It's not a big deal. And if we were to look at this, and instead of getting dy dx, we want to get dz dx, well, all of a sudden it's a little bit more complex. So the total derivative of z with respect to x now depends on x and depends on y. But y depends on x. So let's really spell this out here. We have to use the chain rule to compute this. So you might think, okay, well, the, the total derivative of z with respect to x is just equal to the partial z partial x. Ah, but that's not everything. We need to include additional terms here. If you took a screenshot of that little frame that I showed you, it would be wrong. Don't share that with people. We need to add more terms here due to the chain rule. We also need the partial derivative of z with respect to y and the total derivative of y with respect to x. Given all of these terms, we can combine them together, again using the chain rule, to get the total derivative of z with respect to x. Remember from your calc three days, partial derivatives are easier to calculate. We like looking at them compared to total derivatives. Total derivatives for a multidisciplinary system can easily become extremely hairy. But I have great news. Let's talk about a potential trade deal that you can do with OpenMDAO. So let's talk about this trade deal. If you supply the partial derivatives for all the components or systems within your model, and then also tell OpenMDAO how to solve for the total derivatives, it will combine all of these partials together, accounting for any kind of solvers or different kind of model hierarchies that you have, and give you the total derivatives. Now again, total derivatives are what we need to do gradient-based design optimization. We need the functions of interest with respect to the design variables. We need that sensitivity. You could compute the total derivatives by hand, but again, if you have a very complex model, let alone a nested kind of solver hierarchy, that easily becomes intractable. So you're on the clock. Do you want to take this trade? It might seem like a bum deal, right? You have to provide two things, and OpenMDO is just giving you one thing. But again, the total derivatives are so challenging to compute. Writing out an analytic expression for them is oftentimes impossible, let alone just sitting down and trying to figure out how to structure your code, how to structure the actual operations to compute total derivatives. You don't want to do that. So I'd highly encourage you to take this trade, right? You can provide partials for each one of your systems. This allows a very modular setup. You can move around different parts of your system with the partial derivatives, arrange them in any order, connect them however you want, and open your handles obtaining the total derivatives. Now I talked about, you need to also say how to solve for the totals. That's where the linear solver comes in. OpenMDO allows you to say how you're going to use a linear solver to converge the derivative information. You yourself don't solve for the total derivatives, but you tell OpenMDO how to do it, and then it solves it for you. Now here's something that's really neat about OpenMDO, and I want to really drive this point home. It's the idea that you can use a heterogeneous mix of derivative computation methods within a given model. OpenMDO doesn't care how you're providing the partial derivatives. They can be hand calculated or analytic, they can be automatically differentiated, or you can use finite difference or complex step. You can use any combination of these across many different subsystems within the same model. Here is kind of an example of that. Let's just say that we had a kind of simple error structural wing design problem. In the geometry, we might be finite differencing because it'd be challenging to get the analytic derivatives of a CAD package. However, for the aerodynamics, you'd want something that's not finite differencing because you're dealing with so many states 
Maybe you're doing CFD in the loop. So here the aerodynamics is automatically differentiated. Then on the structural side, maybe you can get an analytic expression. And for the performance, kind of the functionals of the aircraft, maybe again you can get an analytic expression for the derivatives. So the beauty of OpenMDO is that you can choose to use any sort of combination, whatever is best for your purposes, to compute the total derivatives. Again, you simply need to provide how to compute the partial derivatives for each one of these subsystems, and OpenMDO behind the scenes solves for the total derivatives. So that was just a real brief introduction to the idea of total and partial derivatives. I mentioned both of these throughout the course all the time. I can't stress enough that if you're able to provide the partial derivatives, the fact that OpenMDO computes the totals is so nice. You can use any sort of hybrid method that you want as long as you're computing the partials in some way. Understanding totals versus partial derivatives is really important for this course. If you're doing gradient-based optimization and you're at the point where you really care about efficiency, understanding how you're computing your partials and what kind of solvers you're using for your total derivatives is very important. So other lectures will go into more detail about specific parts of this, but I just want to give a brief introduction and explain the differences between total and partial derivatives. If you've liked what you've seen, please hit those like and subscribe buttons. Guys, gals, and non-binary pals, thank you for watching.